All right. So um, if you ever send out construction drawings, chances are you had to make some type of changes or updates afterwards. So they either go out as addendums or field instructions or bulletins. It depends what you call them. The changes always have to be indicated on the drawings. And usually you would use uh, revision clouds or sometimes people call them bubbles. Essentially, they're just little uh, clouds or bubbles that go around the changes on the drawing. It helps the contractor or your client uh, see exactly what has changed on the drawing without having to take two drawings and compare them side by side. The clouds will literally just go around the thing that changed. This is especially important for quick processing of bulletins and it helps uh, cost estimators just zone in on the things that are different and give you an updated price or submit a change order. So today, let's go over a couple things about how you implement these revision clouds, how to set it up, how to draw them, where to draw them, and how to turn them off um, when you go to the next bulletin. So let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the Revit sample project. Um, so they have a couple sheets set up and uh, let's pretend like this went out for construction. So actually I think, yeah, here it says construction issue on this date. So in order to add a bulletin revision cloud, you have to go up here to view and then go to revisions. So when you open this window, you can uh, list all your different issues that you send out. You, sometimes you would do like a 30, 60, 90% and then your construction issue. Then after your construction issue, you have your bulletins. So for this one, I, we just have construction in here before. Um, we're gonna click issue so that it locks this bulletin or it locks this um, revision out. So when you click this button and hit OK, essentially whatever was clouded or changed in that issue is um, locked out so you can't accidentally update it. Like you can't re-cloud something else. So it's always good to do. So click on issue for the stuff that already went out. And then if you're sending out a bulletin, let's pretend this is bulletin one. So we're going to we're going to hit add. Then another one's going to pop up here. So you can change several things about this bulletin. Uh, you can switch to alphanumeric, alphanumeric if you want to use letters or numeric if you want to use uh, numbers. So we're going to stick with numbers and then you fill in the date. So it's, today's date is the uh, 13th. So 13 and then you're going to hit January um, 2023 and we'll call this bulletin one. So as we're working on it, we're not going to hit issue. We're going to leave it blank. Uh, issue two, you can put your client's, you know, um, client's initial if you want to, and then issue by is usually is is usually the uh, engineer that's doing it. So I'll put my initials in there. Uh, for what to show, as you're issuing this current issue, you want to show the cloud and the tag. Sometimes, if you um, do multiple bulletins. Uh, people would like to keep the tag around. So like the little triangle that shows a number. So uh, if you are doing it now, you would hit cloud and tag. If you want it to remain behind, you can use tag. Uh, sometimes uh, companies like to have none. So we just do none and only cloud and tag the current issue. So right now we're gonna leave it at cloud and tag. And then we're gonna just check the other attributes on the right hand side. Numbering wise, you generally wanna just go by sheet. Uh, so like the, if you look over here, under this title block, this numbering is going to go one, two, three, four, five by sheet. Uh, you can do by project, but then like if a sheet doesn't have a specific bulletin, it's just going to go like one, three, seven, nine, or something like that. Uh, there's benefits to both. Um, if you do by project, sometimes you you can just say a general statement is that um, the project's latest revision number is number ten. So if, if you don't see a number ten, don't use that drawing. So it, sometimes it's helpful that way, but I'm just used to doing it by sheet. So let's go by sheet. And then uh, if you customize number, you can do something special, like if you one dash one or whatever. Um, here is the arc length. We can try out this arc length. And if the clouds are too big, like they're too bubbly, you can come into here and shrink that number down to make the arcs a little smaller. So we're just gonna leave that is for now, but that's where you can change it. So let's hit okay. And then now you have your revision set up, you can start clouding things. So how do you go ahead and cloud? Um, you wanna go up here to the annotate and then over to the right, right here is revision cloud. So revision cloud, it gives you a good demonstration of what it is. Um, you see that if I hover over here, it says revision cloud and then there's two letters next to it, RE. That's the keyboard shortcut that I have set up for this particular action. So instead of having to click on this and then come down here and draw it, 
I can actually just type on my keyboard RE and then it brings that same interface up. So typically we like to just use a, a rectangle. So if like, I don't know, this, um, this whole view changed, we can click from one corner, drag to the other, click, and then hit this check mark. Uh, before you do that though, generally go, um, you wanna go over here to the revision and make sure it's on bulletin one. Sometimes it'll go back to whatever the previous one is. And it, um, if it's turned off, you'll hit accept. And then this revision cloud just like disappears. Then you have to undo it to bring it back to fix it. And then it's just kind of annoying. So always check to make sure that this says the correct bulletin before you hit the check mark to accept. All right, so we're gonna hit accept on this revision cloud. And you can see that it has uh, drawn it in a dark color. We can go ahead and click on this if we need to change it to a different issue. So now that you have the clouds in, you have to tag the cloud so that they know um, which revision this was part of. So to tag it, you can do, I believe it's tagged by category, and then yeah, you can just hover your mouse over the cloud. That way it, it drops a little triangle. You see that right here? Um, you can use a leader if you want. Some people like some people like to do this, uh, where they just have it attached to a triangle that sticks out a little bit more. Um, this is it without a leader. Come on, try again. Tag, yeah, this is without a leader. So it generally likes to stay touching the cloud. I have a preference of doing bottom right for any revision cloud. So whenever there's a cloud, I generally try to bias it towards the bottom right. But whatever it is, pick a consistent location so that whenever you see a cloud, you have a general idea of where to look for the triangle. Like don't just willy nilly place it anywhere because it's kind of hard to see in the future when you're a couple clouds in. All right, so now that I drew this uh, cloud here, there's actually two places where you can actually draw them. So you can draw them in the model space, which is basically like drawing it on the floor plan, or you can draw it on sheet or paper space. So the difference between the two is that when you draw on a model space view, you cannot move the floor plan and the cloud separately. They stay together. You can move them around the sheet separately. Um, but when you draw the revision cloud on the sheet, you can actually move the view separate from the revision cloud. So let's, for example, take this view right here. You see how there's two of them. And um, let's say, for example, this one here on the left, we need to expand this view. So I'm going to go in here. We can like, let's pretend like I got to go like way over here. And now that the sheet is the way it is, it doesn't make any sense because it kind of runs together. So I want to take this stair riser. Uh, oh, actually they did it correctly here. So let's unpin this. So let, let me say, let's say that I need to move this over here for one of the bulletins, like the bulletin um, two takes this, expands it. Now my view has changed. If someone were to turn on bulletin one's revision cloud, this is what they're going to see in the future is that they're going to have this thing clouded here and you're not going to understand why that is the way it is. So that's one reason why you maybe want to not draw on the sheet um, for a, a revision cloud that's you can draw on a, on a floor plan. So instead, instead of drawing it on here, you would click into this riser over here so that it's active. Then you can draw your re revision cloud. So draw it around there hit okay, and then tag. So now that it's inside of this view here, let's, let's deactivate it. If I were to click and drag this around, you see how the cloud stays with it. Like it, it doesn't separate from each other. So this one, it's, it's the lazy way of doing it. If you want to just slap it on the sheet, it's good for some aspects. Actually, there is one instance where this is required. So I'll show you that in a minute, but normally I, I don't like to do that. I'd like to draw it within the, the uh, floor plan itself. So you put it in here, then you can drag this whole thing over here. Maybe, um, I don't know why this thing is so far out, but let's fix that a little bit. Uh, but anyways, you can reorganize your sheet without having to, Oh, there we go. You can reorganize your sheet without the cloud getting lost in the process. So I'm going to delete that. And there you go. There's your revision cloud drawn in model space that shows up on the sheet. So I'm just explaining to you the two different ways you can do it. You don't have to pick one or the other. Um, I've seen it done both ways. There's not really a right way or wrong way that I know of. There's pros and cons to each. So there is one instance where you have to draw the revision cloud on the sheet.
And that's when you have a view that goes on multiple sheets. So let's take a legend, which you know that legends can go on multiple sheets. And uh, if you don't, you can check out this video here. Um, the legend, let's say we'll drag abbreviations to here. And then we're gonna go to this unnamed view. Take this, oh, didn't mean to open it. Take this abbreviation and drag it here. So now that it's on two sheets, if I were to do the same thing, go into the view and draw a revision cloud around, let's say the word abbreviation, um, that's bulletin one, hit okay. And if I were to try to tag that, you see that the triangle is blank. That's because the triangle is trying to pull the current revision that's on this particular sheet that the view is showing on. But because a legend can be on multiple sheets that have multiple different review numbers or revision numbers, um, it doesn't know what to populate it with. So this is one of those instances where if you make a change like this, you actually have to cloud it in sheet view. So let's deactivate this, delete that, deactivate, and then yeah, once I deactivate it, I should be in uh, sheet view. So now I can draw the revision cloud like this and it's taggable. So let's go back to the front. This one, same thing, revision, and I can tag it. So that is now separate from that. You see, I can move the legend and the revision cloud stays behind. So one of the fixes that I like to do is to click on the legend and pin that in place. All right, and that's how you set up and draw revision clouds on your drawings. So you would package this up, um, send it out to your client, and hopefully that's it. But if you need to come back and make another change, another bulletin needs to go out, you wanna turn off the previous bulletin clouds and or tags so that you can put in the clouds for the new bulletin. So on your next go around, just go up here to um, your view, view window and then under revision, um, let's pretend like we got bulletin two coming in. So we'll click on two, we'll hit add. So this is now your bulletin two. And then under bulletin one, instead of cloud and tag, you can choose to say tag or none. So I generally use none. So if I hit okay, you can see that it clears out the revision cloud. So it's still there, but you just can't see it. It's turned off. Um, if you ever need to bring it back for some reason, you just go up to the revision window here, click on um, cloud and tag again, and there you go, it comes back. All right, so that's the revision cloud bubble in a nutshell. If you have further questions, let us know in the comments below. If you wanna hang out on Discord or support me on Patreon, you can find those links down below as well. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time, bye. Oh, my, my hair still my hair sticking out. Uh, well, there's no going back now. <laughs> <laughs>